Yeah, I uh, so with that, the whole team type of mentality that you have, I'm interested uh, on your take. As you're developing your team at iShine, and if I remember right, you took your basketball team state champions. You went, you, you were. We, we was runner up, state runners up. Runner up. Yeah, I was runner up. So, and, and even that, you know, was where it, one of the ways I started networking. And but also, you know, it was a fun run. Um, great group of guys, you know, and I love the game. But while I was focusing on basketball, the business was suffering. Yeah, but you know, I'm I'm curious about how you know what what things have you learned as being a successful coach to help you building a team uh, within the business. Oh, and you, I'm glad you asked because uh, that's actually one of the things that I had to focus on in 2020 and coming into this in 2021. You know, the, the technical side of me was me being a player. The business side of me is the coach. <laughs> so, you know, I had to get out of the, the player role and get into the coaching role, which leads into the business owner and making sure things are running the way they should. So uh, one of my good friends uh, who's out of Jacksonville, Florida, uh, his name is Mark Elliott. You know, he kind of made it make sense to me because I was overlooking it. You know, I was trying to be always the technician. I wanted to be the best, you know, the best detailer around town and all the other good stuff. But. Um, as I was coaching, as you mentioned, I had to really think about it when I was coaching. The business was suffering because I was a coach and a player, you know, the, the player coach, if you call it. <laughs> right. So being able to shift out of that player side role has helped me build that team and look at, you know. Because I would imagine that's got to be tough, right? You hire a new employee. You know how something needs to be done in order to get the outcome that you're expecting. Uh -huh. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, but you got to keep him in the game so that he can figure this stuff out. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, was that difficult for you to to purposely put yourself on the bench so that you can let these players play? <laughs> yes, it was. It really was uh, because you know this guy he came with some experience, and of course, you know anybody right now on a resume, hey, I got experience, and you know, of course, you can say somebody, who, you know, the, the company failed, so it's not around anymore, so they can have anybody on a resume, but. To actually see someone actually in person, and that's what I try to do. You know, I give everybody a fair shot that want to work. But if you can't, you don't, you know, come through and don't do the work, then you're not going to measure up to anything. But um, just having that faith again, I'm back to the faith part. <clears throat> having that faith was how really has allowed me to trust that person to say and believe what they said they can do. They can do it, and, and that's all I've done as far as you know. We had. What we had, what, I got two, two full time guys and one part time guy now, including myself. Um, and that was all trust, you know. It was, I didn't look, I didn't really go for the technical aspect because, you know, what we do, I mean, if you want to learn, you can do it anyways. Um, so it was just one of the things to trust that person going to show up on work when they said they're going to come. Um, they're not going to steal out of somebody's car. Um, you know, they're not going to damage a car. So things of that nature was pretty much the really, you know, the, the biggest thing that I had to really have faith in. Yeah. It's, inter it's interesting. Uh, one of my favorite books, my favorite book is a book called North by Scott Jerk. It's where he, he runs the Appalachian Trail, which is about 2,200 miles. Uh, and he does it. He's trying to uh, compete to do this in the fastest known time uh, of all time. I'm uh, if you've never read it, I definitely recommend you doing it. I'm, I've told Tim to read it. He's read it. I've read it three times. And um, what's interesting is, yes, it's a story about running the Appalachian Trail. But so much of it is it about is a team aspect of it. And while he's the one physically running, he has to trust all these other people that they're going to do the things that he needs them to do. So his wife is someone who is going to uh, a, a series of different stops to replenish him of food and drink and clothes and things like that. He has all these other people that are friends throughout the way that come in and help help him in different kind of ways. And so this guy, Scott Jerk, who um, does end up getting the record um, for running the Appalachian Trail uh, in like 46 days or something like that, he has to trust a bunch of people throughout time, just like you have to do in business. And so I always like to recommend that book to people where 
it has nothing to do with business, but if you really think about it, it has a ton to do with business. And I think people need to stop reading business books per se and find books like this that can really tell a story that has a ton of impact on trust, on team building and in finding the right people and relationship building and, and then grit, you know, pushing through something where you're running 35 to 60 miles a day. That's business. If you think about it, that's life. And so it, it's, it's a big impactful book for me. Um, and, and I, and I think everything that you've been talking about even today is really around what this guy did in, in, in this race, you know, for 46 days, you know, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, I know one of the biggest uh, the challenges for me, as I brought on folks was letting them fail or, you know, not wording an email or wording something the same way that I would do it. It's, you know, it's just resisting those good, happy to glad type of changes that uh, what they're doing is still really effective um, and it's good enough. Yeah, and I'm not suggesting that you have a good enough vehicle in terms of cleanliness, but uh, you know, giving giving people that work for you the opportunity to to learn. Yeah, learn and also to grow. You know, um, right. You know, the overall plan, you know, like I said, it's bigger than I always say it's bigger than a car wash. You know, because we're we're making an impact on somebody's life on their car, and you know, I take pride in that. You know, because I don't want to just be okay, the car wash guy on Moortown Road. You know, you know. Um, like I said, I'm a people person and, you know, you won't believe some of how emotional people are tied to their cars and, you know, take great pride and let somebody know how emotional you are, and how attached to it. You know, it's my job to make sure I come and deliver and make them feel good about that car. You know, we always say it's just imagine how, how you feel about your car when it's clean is a lot different from when it's dirty. And, you know, we've got that compliment a lot. You know, hey, this is a, it's the same car. But just having it clean, professionally clean, they feel a sense of pride and joy to say, hey, you know, this is really a nice car, like the way I the way I bought it. So is there something?